Oh, champ, and also master of the air, he should have a pilot's license, Italo Ferreira. So let's not waste any time and let's dive straight in. So we've got a video here. This is another one of the coaches I was where Clayton hasn't seen the video ahead of time. So Clayton's got no idea what he's about to see. All he knows is that it is Italio Ferreira. So let's bring out the iPad and let's play. Let's see what takeaways we get. Oh, he got annihilated. So that, like, he does a lot on waves that aren't, like, your, your perfect kind of waves. So he's grown up surfing Brazil in less than perfect waves. Mm. So, 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 so typically then, like, a, a, a Brazilian kind of wave versus, because I think a lot of the coach sides that we've done, it's, they've been quite long, sort of perfect yeah. kind of waves. So Brazilian waves, what what sort of, like, explain to, to me? Fast twitch muscle memory. Okay. So, so basically that they're moving really, really quick. So real beach breaky as opposed to point breaks. Yeah, because you, you haven't got time to, to move. you just okay. got to get stuff done. So y you'll find, like, um, the Toledos and the Italos, they've got a high energy surf. Okay, yep. Okay. Um, which is initially... When Brazilians got on tour, their styles were regarded as being a bit ugly because they're just moving and they're just they're all over the place. But as soon as the Brazilians started traveling more and surfing more powerful waves and learning how to slow down by like watching Hawaiians yeah. and, and stuff like that, um, and started to kind of feel the wave a bit more, suddenly their, their styles developed. And now you've got people with fast twitch muscle memory who can regulate between surfing slow and surfing fast. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a pretty powerful place to be. Correct. So it's easy for a person who rides small waves, who's motivated surfing shit waves, to then learn how to ride big waves. But it's really hard for someone who rides big waves to find the motivation to go surf small shitty waves. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I think the Brazilians are having this Brazilian storm on tour, where they just like an army of ants, just like and, and <laughs> chewing up and annihilating everyone. Um, and it's because of their background, where they come from, and yep. how hard they've worked for it. Cool. Well, let's let's see what we can take away. And I'm sure that there's loads here, but um, look, look at the section straight away. So he's eyeballing where he wants to hit, and I mean the things are really pitching. It, it looks late. That that it looks broken already. Okay. Now what I want to show you there is that he's not centered over his board. Mm. He's inverted. So straight away, his board is kind of weightless. It's almost like he's laying, laying down on his back almost there. Yeah, it's like he's standing at 90 degrees to the surface of the face, mm. where a lot of people will try to hit that and stand on top of the board. So he's allowing the board to move. He's giving it space. He's making it lighter. Yeah. Now, in order to give it more space, you'll need to bring the knees in yep. to be able to get any rotation. So he's not really pulling, pushing out as much as he's drawing the knees in Kind of like a skateboarder doing an ollie. So when he goes for a turn, there's the knee in. Okay, he's created space. He's, he's brought the knee up to the chest. So you'll notice that his back is straight. It doesn't move. The back straight, so he's got balance. He brings the knees up. Now, imagine this for a second. I've got a, a tennis ball there, and I throw the tennis ball back in. Mm. And what he has to do is he's got to hit the tennis ball back with his fins. Does that make a bit more sense? So when he goes, it makes sense. It sounds ridiculously difficult. No, when he goes for the turn, he sta he stands on the front leg. So that's now the balancing part of the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he stands on the front leg. He looks. Ah, oh, there's the tennis ball. Okay. He brings the knee up on the back leg, and using the fins, he basically kicks the tennis ball back to the beach. Boom. Okay. Now. You've made that sound ridiculously easy. Yep. I feel like a sack of potatoes if I ever try and do anything that looks as, as light and as energetic as that. Because I think 
You may have too many moving parts. Okay. You don't know what to do. Well, I, 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 tell okay, you what, I so clearly don't know what to do. Well, let's break... Look, look, look at this. This is crazy. All right, let's break this one down again. Is he moving his back? No. No. It's dead straight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he's looking. And he's anticipating. Okay. Then all he does is he just... If, if you threw a ball, I would stand balanced on the front leg and I'd move the, my hip and the back leg around and kick the ball. Yeah. That's all he's done. <laughs> I love it. That's all he's done. You still make it sound really easy. Like I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of people watching this that would love to be able to do well, look, something as as standing on as radical as that. And he kicks the back leg around. Yeah, I can I, I, I can. I can see what you're saying. The the, the, the reality of, of actually making that happen when you've got so much. When you you're thinking, right, I'm on a surfboard. I'm in the water. I'm trying to balance. Da 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 da. You got all this stuff going on, and then you go, ah, oh, just simply just. Use okay. your back leg to kick the tennis ball back to the so beach. So when you figure out the technique and you focus just on the kick, everything's easy. Okay. But when you go into that turn, you go, oh, air section. i got to do like, uh, and I think having too many moving parts and too many thoughts is where things start breaking down. Okay. Keep, keep, keep going. I'm going I'm to ask you a question in a minute. Okay. But, so but, but keep going. Imagine if we are fighting and yeah. I want to do a roundhouse kick and kick you in the head. Yeah. Yep. I would have to balance on the front foot. Yeah. I'd need to dip my head to get the leg up higher. Yep. Okay, so I get that. bear that in mind. So here he's okay. going for a, um, a a backhand three. Spinny thing. Spinny thing. All right, so <laughs> what he does, he's stacking all his weight onto that front foot, right, and he's doing a roundhouse kick, and he's kicking to the beach. Boom. I... That's a okay, so, so watch this over here. I think he does it again. So he gets his head low. Now you'll notice he's not standing on the board. Mm-hmm. So if I was to kick you, the lower I dip my head, the more momentum I'll have for the kick. Okay. If I'm standing up straight, there's no ways I can twist. I'll twist myself off my feet. Yep. Okay. Now he puts all his weight onto the front foot. And there's the roundhouse kick. And then once he's spinning backwards, he's just got to stand up straight. The fins will engage and it'll spin the board around. So there he stands up straight. And there's the engagement. Okay. Now, oh, what's what we've got here? So big compression. Now you'll notice on the compression, his knees are pointing forward, which is really good. The hand's wound up because he's going to throw the hand. Okay, I, I was going to ask you about the hand because obviously a lot, a lot of the time we talk about the coffee cup and having the arm, the arm forward. Yep. And here... He, he kind of looks like he's like hang gliding kind of thing, like trying to fly, but there's a reason for it. Yeah, think think if he was playing tennis, right? The ball gets hit to you, you've got, you've got this hand in front, yep. and you're almost going to wind up. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that's it's like a tennis wind up. So basically, here's the tennis racket over there. Yep, right? nice tennis racket. So as it goes through. Oh, yeah, then. Oh, oh big knee up to the chest. Now, again, look at his back is straight. So there's mm. not a lot of moving parts other than if you're on a trampoline and you had to jump over a wall, you'd, you'd straighten your back and try to pick your knees up as high as you can. Yep. Now, there's a trick to this. Had he have only done a small layer, so had he have been played, say, about this high, there's a very good chance that he would have landed inside of that trough. Now, that trough looks kind of like this. It does this. And that's where you get injured. That's where you kind of break your ankle because the water's shooting back up and the water's coming down and you're coming down. So this is where all the injury happens. But by getting a bit more loftier, all right, notice when he lands, the trough's gone. Yep. Now now he's just got a a real soft foamy to land on. Okay? And it's like landing on pillows. Boom! He lands really, really soft. But the guys doing, doing small airs, like little ones, they go over the falls and they land in that impact zone. Right. And those are the guys getting injured. Okay. So the higher loftier is. So just go higher. Yes. <laughs> just simply go higher, well, he says. What happens is all the waves' energy dissipates and the landings are so much more easier. Okay. That's, okay, so I am now going to ask my question. So go for it. This, I, I, I would love to be able to do something along these lines here. I clearly can't at the moment. And... But what, so what, what, if somebody wants to start sort of getting a bit more radical where they are starting to maybe get a little bit of air and stuff off of their waves, what's, what's a good sort of starting place to, to, 
to go through. You said that learn before, how to ollie a skateboard. So learn how to ollie a skateboard. Because if you look at that, he's doing an ollie. He's lifted the nose up and he's sliding the front foot forward. Okay. And then he'll pick the back leg up and he's basically doing an ollie. So if you watch and follow through there, that's there's an ollie. Boom. Okay. So learn how to ollie a skateboard. Yeah. All of your airs are basically flat moves, which is like skating in the street, which is flat. Mm-hmm. Okay, then it's timing of where do I do my air? Where do I ollie from? Yep. So an ollie will teach you how to launch and how to land. Yep. Okay, let's, let's, let's come back here. So so the big takeaway, I'm, I'm still slightly confused because you've made it sound really easy. It is. I, uh, you're, you're saying it is. I think that the majority of people watching this, and hopefully you'll agree with me and you'll put in the comments below that you agree with, with Ant, that it is actually pretty difficult because... It's, you make it sound simple, but there's, there's so much going on. Well, okay. A lot of people... Hang on, on, we're going to give it to that, but hang on, hang on a second. Okay. A lot of people on eyeing this section over here, okay, they'll go up and they'll push on their tail to try yep. air. Okay, and they just blow the tail out. Um, what you need to do is actually pull the knees up. You need to start learning how to do an ollie and keep your back straight. Okay, a lot of people sort of like lean back and, and also try to do that air. Okay. Uh, in which case, they just kick the board away from themselves. Mm. Okay, so they do like flyaway airs. You have to stay sensitive of your board. Um, and it's relatively just what goes up must come down. So if you do it nice and cleanly and there's not too many moving parts, it's going to be easy to do. Okay, perfect. I feel that this that this this video could be a whole, I mean, this is a whole training thing in itself, getting yeah. airs. But just but for the start off for this, go out there, start so don't get on a surfboard, get on a skateboard instead and start ollieing that skateboard if, if, if the airtime is what you're looking to, to start getting into. If you haven't liked and subscribed, uh, make sure that you do also hit that notification bell so that you find out when the next Coach's Eye comes out. Let us know as well below any other people who you would like us to analyse for that air game side of things. It's, it is something which really interests me, something which uh, I've been... I've been sort of looking at thinking it would be quite nice to be able to do it, but it it's seems... On the bucket list. <laughs> it's on the bucket list. On the air bucket list. On the hot air balloon list, so I can go up in the air. But um, How are your ollies? My ollies on a skateboard are uh, medium. Medium. Yeah. I can do them. Cool. I, can get, I can get up and down a curb. Good. So honestly, just just learn how to, how to float and get more hang time on your ollie. Okay. And that's the... A lot of people want to rush the edge. You've got to get your hang time. Oh, okay. And it's done. Cool. So get out there, learn to ollie a skateboard, and learn to, uh, and try and get as much hang time while you're doing it as well. So this week, don't go out there and catch some waves. Go out there and ride a skateboard instead, and start doing some ollieing. And we'll see you in the next coach's eye.